Hey, it's Transgender Day of Visibility later on this week, so let's talk about why I really freaking care about this holiday. Hello, I'm Jackson Bird, and today we're talking about gay stuff. So, as many of you know, I did not come out as transgender until I was 25. Yes, I am older than 25, I am in my late 20s, yes, I still look like a teenager, eternal trans baby face. I just want you to hit me up when you find your first gray hair, and I'm still using the student discounts. Cha-ching! Anyways, why did it take so long for me to come out and transition? Well, the short answer is that I grew up in Texas in the 90s, and I had no idea that trans men existed. But the long answer is... Well, first, that the short answer is a lie. I did know that trans men existed. I just didn't think that they could be gay. And at the time, I thought that I might be gay, you know, if I were a man. Spoiler warning, I'm not gay. I'm what us intellectuals call bisexual. But again, growing up in Texas in the 90s, no matter how I felt inside, I was conditioned to believe that I was a girl who liked boys. And I did, and I do like boys. But any thoughts of liking girls was pushed way deep down. Even deeper down than my suspicions that I probably should have just been born a boy to begin with. That one I actually thought about quite a lot. So when I stumbled on an Oprah special one day after middle school about transgender kids, my mind was blown. Here were kids about my age who had been assigned female at birth but whose parents were letting them live as the boys they had always known themselves to be. Now that I think about it, if that counts, that was like the first time that I actually saw myself reflected back in the media. And I remember spending the whole time watching it just thinking about like how it applied to me and how I could maybe talk to my mom about it and start living like those boys were. But towards the end of the episode, Oprah asked one of the teenage boys if he liked girls and he said yes. Which made sense to me because he was a boy so of course he liked girls. But then I thought about it as it applied to me and this whole new revelation came crashing down around me. Because I did not like girls. Well, maybe I did. I probably did. But I didn't want to. Because the culture that I grew up in in Texas had me so scared to think about girls in that way when I was also being told that I was a girl that I was frankly disgusted and terrified at the thought. Even if liking girls would have made me straight as a trans boy. Even still, I couldn't get my brain to a place where it wasn't terrifying to think about the idea of liking girls. That's how deeply conditioned I was with homophobia. Plus, I really did like boys. Like, really, really liked boys. And I didn't know if I could give up liking boys for the sake of getting to live as my true self. Even if nearly all I thought about every minute of every day as a preteen was this imaginary world where I was a boy with a boyfriend. Because apparently, according to this Oprah special I saw, trans boys like girls. Oprah said it, so it had to be true. And I couldn't find any other examples of trans boys out there, and certainly not any of trans men. So I just continued on growing up believing that I alone had been been born with this awful curse of being both trans and gay. Like as if that was some improbable combination that no one else in the world possessed. And that it made me so weird that I could never tell anyone, I could never do anything about it. I just had to suck it up and live my life as a girl. But of course, eventually, I went to college and I met real trans people and queer people and I took gender theory courses and I learned everything there is to know about gender and sexual diversity, including, most importantly, that trans people can be any sexual or romantic orientation. Trans people are just like Cis people. We can be straight, gay, bi, pan, ace, whatever. Being trans does not negate any of that. And of course, by the time I learned that and started unpacking all of my own feelings around gender with like the actual words and knowledge to go behind it, I started realizing that I had liked girls that whole time. Yup. Could have just been a non-issue if I just realized that from the start. But the thing I really want to hammer home is that I learned what it meant to be trans when I was 11. And I kept it locked up inside of me for over 10 years because I had been misinformed. Because I'd grown up in a culture of homophobia and transphobia and zero education. Because the few media representations that I stumbled upon were my education, and because they weren't accurate or useful representations. I spent nearly half my life thinking that I was a standalone freak 
because I'd never been given a reason to think otherwise. So that is why media representation matters. That is why getting sex and gender education in schools matters. Those are both crucial places of learning for kids and we need so much more responsible and respectful representation in both of them. Cause like, listen, as sad as it was that I spent nearly half of my life confused and lonely when I could have been able to transition before puberty and like, how rad would that have been to have gotten to live the childhood I always dreamt of? But my story is hardly distressing compared to the much worse depression, dysphoria, substance abuse, bullying, violence, and suicide that happens to so many other trans and gender non-conforming kids out there there as a result of a lack of education and role models. All of which is why I do what I do. It's why I make these videos. It's why I travel around the world as a public speaker on trans issues. And it's why I have a podcast amplifying the voices of trans people. What's that? Podcast? Uh, yeah. Transmission is back on the airwaves March 31st, Transgender Day of Visibility. Because visibility freaking matters, all right? I might launch season two of Transmission like a day earlier because Transgender Day of Visibility is a Saturday and Saturday is like a weird launch day. But follow Transmission on Facebook or subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts so you can hear it as soon as season two drops. Also, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at Jack is not a bird to get updates on the podcast and all my other work. I'm gonna leave some more resources on Transgender Day of Visibility down in the description box. And in the comments today, I wanna know the first time you saw a positive representation of a trans person in the media, in school, or in your life. Whether you are cis or trans, leave your comment below. I hope you all have a very happy Transgender Day of Visibility on Saturday. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. So while in the fourth grade we're not doing pieces specifically on being transgender, we are giving them lots of space to explore gender roles, which gives lots of space for that trans kid, and you know there's the trans kid in the class. <laughs> if not that one class, then in the school, it gives them space to say, hey, I don't have to be this, or it's okay for me to not like everything from the gender box. But it also teaches other kids to treat that kid well later on. Oh, that is so much what I keep saying that I want desperately, is like this kind of education from such a young age.